Okay, good afternoon, everyone. We're gonna go ahead and get started. Welcome to today's webinar, Strengthening Campus Connections, How Living Learning, Learning Communities Increase Student Success. My name is Kristen Hengen, and I'm a senior researcher with the Florida College Access Network. I am so pleased to welcome today's presenters, a truly all-star panel. I want to welcome Dr. Brenda Spencer. She is director in the Undergraduate Student Success Center at Florida A&M University. In this role, she directs the Living Learning Community and Transfer Academic Success Programs, prepares articulation agreements, and coordinates the curriculum mapping process between FAMU and state colleges. Dr. Spencer is a native of Tallahassee, Florida. She received her bachelor's and master's degrees from FAMU and a PhD in higher education administration from Florida State University. She is a member of the National Association of Student Personnel Administrators and the Association of College and University Housing Officers International, among other professional organizations. Additionally, Dr. Spencer is actively involved in various educational and community service initiatives within the Tallahassee community. I also want to welcome Noidi Carolina Nunez, who has been working in higher education for the past 13 years. Her professional journey began at Boston College and continued at Nova Southeastern University and Old Dominion University. For the past six years, Noidi Carolina has served as the Program Director for Academic Initiatives and Living Learning Communities in Residential Education at the University of South Florida. In this role, she provided strategic visioning and leadership to the LLC program, expanded faculty collaborations, collaborated on LLC residential curriculum development, created strategic initiatives for the retention, persistence, and graduation of residential students and student staff, and led assessment initiatives for the department. She was recently named Assistant Dean of Students and Director of the, for the Office of Multicultural Affairs at USF. Congratulations. I also want to welcome Jasmine Welch, a third year biology and pre-medicine major at Florida A&M University. Through the matriculation of Jasmine's journey through college, she's been involved in a number of different organizations, such as the National Council of Negro Women, the Minority Association of Pre-Medical Students, and the FAMU Gospel Choir, which was invited to sing at Disney World. She also works as a residential assistant, a resident assistant on campus at one of the resident halls. She plans to go to medical school, working as a neonatologist and give back to her community. Finally, I want to welcome Della or Delinem Akahoho, first year Master of Public Health student, pursuing a combined concentration in epidemiology and maternal and child health at the University of South Florida. Her primary interests in public health are surveillance-based research, maternal and child health, health equity, and advocacy. Della graduated with a Bachelor's of Science in Biomedical Science with a public health minor from USF. During her time at USF, Della was a member of the inaugural Rising Health Professionals LLC. Della's experience within the LLC led her to become a resident assistant for the Student Support Living Learning Community. Through fostering community with her residents to her individual academic pursuit of excellence, Della developed a passion for evidence-based research and advocacy for disadvantaged communities. Della currently serves as a graduate assistant for multicultural student success at USF. She aspires to use her position in public health education to humanize big data as she considers the individual narratives and cultures that drive community change. Additionally, she stri strives to be a catalyst for change, to advocate, educate, and lead in a manner that enhances health equity and policy-based decision-making, specifically for moms and children. In her free time, she enjoys spending time with her campus ministry family, shopping for plants, painting, chilling with friends, and trying out different food spots in Tampa. We truly have a superstar panel today, and I'm so excited to hear what they have to say. But first, before we get started with today's presentation, a few housekeeping items. First, we welcome your questions. Please submit your questions in the Q&A. We'll have time at the end of today's webinar for our guest presenters to answer questions, but you can submit them at any time, and I encourage you to do so. Second, please share what you're learning on your favorite social media platform. We love to hear what's resonating with you. And finally, this webinar is being recorded. All materials will be available within a week of the recording. I know we have some listeners who may be new to FCAN's work. I wanna give you a little background on who we are. Our mission is to lead the collaborative movement to ensure every Floridian achieves an education beyond high school and a rewarding career. Our vision is to see a Florida working together where education is the pathway to economic mobility for all. We accomplish our work in three primary ways, through research and data, 
shining a light on promising practices at the local and state level through our local college access networks and through four statewide initiatives that provide schools and community organizations free resources to help students continue their education after high school. Our work is guided by our seven conditions for success, which you can find out more about on our website. And now let's get to the main event. First, I'll give some background on Living Learning Communities, or LLCs. Then I'll turn it over to Dr. Brenda Spencer and Ms. Nunez, who will each speak about what LLCs have to offer at their universities. We'll then have a panel-style discussion where I'll ask questions to our students, as well as Dr. Spencer and Ms. Nunez. And finally, we'll leave the last 10 or 15 minutes for questions. But first, I wanna take 30 seconds to hear from our audience through a quick poll. What is your familiarity with LLCs? I'll go ahead and put the poll out now and feel free to answer. I'll just take about 30 seconds. Have you ever heard of them? Are you experts on them? What do you know? Give us an idea. <clears throat> we have the perfect mix from what I'm seeing so far. I'll give you about 15 more seconds here. Awesome, a couple more answers are trickling in. I'll close it in about five. Fabulous, all right. So you can see, and this is helpful for our presenters, we really have a mix of people who are maybe somewhat familiar or really not at all familiar with LLCs. So you're in the right spot. We truly have some experts who can tell you a little bit more about what exactly they are and why you, want, you maybe want to connect students in your area with LLCs. Okay, to start us off, I wanna make sure everyone's on the same page when we say LLCs or living learning communities. While they can vary, in general, LLCs are centered on a distinctive theme or academic interest area, and they offer specialized living environment that brings students together. Often LLCs offer students access to events and resources and engage students inside and outside of the classroom. They may include things like sharing courses, co-curricular activities, and opportunities to interact with faculty and their peers with shared interests. They may also have advisors specific to their community, social activities, and tutoring opportunities in their own residence hall. While there are LLCs offered at two-year colleges, most LLCs require residence halls, so LLCs are more likely to be found at four-year colleges. For example, nearly every university in the state university system in Florida has numerous LLCs. However, I want to note that some of Florida schools in the Florida college system have learning communities where students take classes together and are connected with faculty, but they may not be living together. So today we're focusing on living learning communities, but there's a lot out there. I'll give just a really quick, broad overview on some of the research behind LLCs because there's a lot out there. The benefits of LLCs can differ depending on university and context, but there's a lot of research that supports the idea that LLCs have great benefits that have been demonstrated in a variety of institutions with diverse groups of students. The extent to which students academically and socially engage with their post-secondary institutions affects their commitment to that institution and consequently their likelihood of persistence there. Most colleges and universities recognize this and implement programs like LLCs aimed at creating opportunities for students to interact with faculty, staff, and peers. However, LLCs are relatively rare for most students. Results from the last 12 national surveys for student engagement indicates only about 15% of first year students participate across all institutional types. So that means a lot of students are missing out if there are so many great benefits with LLCs. LLCs have been shown to increase student retention rates, academic performance, overall satisfaction with college. LLC students pursue, perceive the campus environment to be more supportive of their success. LLC students believe that their institution contributes more to their growth in a host of developmental areas. In a study from the National Survey of Student Engagement, it surveyed students at 76 institutions and found students in LLCs are more likely to persist than non-participants and the benefits were even larger for male participants. So I could show you a myriad of studies, but generally the research affirms living learning communities offer clear benefits to students and institutions as seen with their positive correlations with student learning, engagement, and persistence. So why does this matter? According to the National Student Clearinghouse, one in three students do not complete their bachelor's degree in six years. 
and graduation rates are even lower for first-generation students, Black, Latinx, and Native American students, and students from the lowest income brackets. And according to the Center for First-Generation Student Success, at public and private four-year institutions, first-gen students are less likely to persist onto their second year. They are also less likely to obtain a bachelor's degree in four years, and we know first-generation students tend to be less engaged and report feeling unskilled at knowing how to navigate college. However, at FCAN, we believe education beyond high school is key to economic mobility, and that those students who have historically been left behind out of post-secondary education hold our state's greatest potential. If only about 15% of first-year students are attending LLCs, there's a lot of potential for more students, and in particular, students less likely to persist or complete their degree to consider LLCs and experience the benefits LLCs can provide. That's why we have brought together today's panelists to share the great work happening in Florida to support our students, and in particular, our first generation and students of color to and through college. So I'm now going to turn it over to Dr. Spencer, who can tell us a little bit more about the great work happening at FAMU and what her students LLCs do to support students. Dr. Spencer, you can take it away. Well, good afternoon, everyone. And thank you so much, uh, Kristen, for inviting me here today uh, to speak to you about Florida a and University's LLC program. Uh, very happy to be here with you all today. Florida a and University, our LLC program started in 2015. You can advance, Kristen, thank you. <laughs> our program started in 2015. Um, there, we, we saw a need. Um, uh, we wanted to enhance our uh, first year GPAs. Uh, we wanted to um, also um, increase our retention and graduation rates. And uh, Kristen, if you could go back to the, thank you. <laughs> thank you, we'll stay on this slide for just, just a moment. Again, we started in 2015 and um, we, we wanted to, to enhance our efforts in these areas in terms of retention, uh, first year GPAs, our graduation rate. And um, the LLC program, uh, is a uh, very uh, vital part of FAMU's student success initiatives. It is a partnership between academic and student affairs, and more specifically, uh, within academic affairs, the Undergraduate Student Success Center, uh, where the uh, program is housed administratively. And then our liaisons uh, actually work in the various schools and colleges, our faculty and staff liaisons and student affairs, uh, which is university housing. So we work very closely um, with between academic affairs and student affairs. It is a partnership uh, to really make this program work. We have 13 major specific LLCs and uh, over 300 uh, student participants annually. And these are first year students. Our LLC program is for first year students. Um, they actually apply via the university's housing application portal, and they are accepted based upon specific academic criteria. And that can include a particular high school or, I'm sorry, high school GPA or a high school test score or an essay submission. So there is specific criteria in place uh, in order to, uh, to qualify and to be accepted into an LLC here at FAMU. Um, and it is based on a first come first, first served basis. We have a designated faculty staff liaison, as I mentioned earlier, uh, and these staff members actually work in those respective schools and colleges. Uh, we have a liaison for each LLC and our liaisons um, help in terms of organizing the activities and working closely with the LLC students. Um, we also have a designated resident assistant per LLC. And these are our students who work in the uh, residence hall. They are there on the floor uh, per se with our LLC students. So if there are any issues that occur, we can uh, of course um, work with them and they can really give us um, 
uh, a reflection of what's really happening on the ground per se. Um, so that's how we're structured. An LLC liaison for each LLC and a designated resident assistant per LLC. All of, at this time, all of our LLCs are located in one residence hall, and that's FAMU Towers North. You can advance the slide. Uh, thank you. Um, our students were accepted into the LLC. They live together uh, per major, based on the major. Um, and you can, they live on the same floor, the residence hall, according to the major area. So for instance, all business students live together on the same floor. All pharmacy students live together on the same floor. Their roommate is also a member of the same LLC. And students must sign an LLC student agreement form um, as, as well in order to participate in the program. And this, I want to emphasize that it's based on their interest in the program as they're applying for housing um, at the end of the housing process. And first of all, they must be accepted to FAMU. Then they apply for housing. And at the end of the housing application process, um, they, will, um, they will be prompted to, um, as to whether or not they want to be a part of the LLC program. Um, so that's how the process works. But if they are interested, they will move forward. And if they meet the criteria, um, they will be accepted. Um, but again, they must sign an LLC student agreement form and students will, will remain in the um, LLC program for the entire academic year. And I just want to show you some of the LLCs. Again, we have 13 major specific. The Provost Leadership LLC is the only one that has a combination of majors. And these are our honors students, um, our university scholars. So it's a variety of majors, but all of the other LLCs are major specific. So you see engineering, we have agriculture and food sciences, allied health sciences, architecture and engineering technology, business, education, environmental sciences, journalism and graphic communication, nursing, pharmacy, science and technology, social sciences, arts and humanities. So you can see we have a, a pretty wide range of major specific LLCs and we have an LLC for each school or college here at FAMU. Um, in terms of the activities, you can see the listing there. Um, but I want to emphasize that there is, um, I think, a, a great deal of faculty engagement. We do get other uh, staff members to come in and present to the students or engage with the students in various activities, whether it's faculty or staff. Uh, many of the students take classes together. Uh, they're in particular section um, uh, together as LLC students. They have study groups. They participate in study groups as well as various uh, group activities and projects. Um, community service activities, um, career related activities. And that's what we want to really emphasize for them to gain early exposure um, to their career area. So that's very important as, as a part of our LLC program. Leadership development, global education, our students, particularly within the Provost uh, Leadership LLC, engineering and allied health sciences, they have traveled, um, and also I think uh, also uh, science and technology, they have traveled globally as well um, as a part of our study abroad program. So they've, they've had that experience. We take career related field trips and of course a little fun as well, cultural and social events. So um, we have, uh, again, a good variety of various activities. In terms of the benefits from what we have seen, uh, I think um, Kristen spoke earlier in terms of the national um, benefits. Um, we have actually seen um, the benefits of the LLC program, including an increase in our first year GPAs, increased faculty and student engagement, increased retention rates, college satisfaction, increase uh, partic particularly in our four year gradu graduation rates, which is very, very important. So we have seen the benefits of students who participate in the LLC versus those who do not participate in the LLC program. So um, it has been great. We're in our seventh year of operation uh, here at Florida a and University for the LLC program. And uh, we look for, forward to um, continuing the great success of the program. Thank you. 
Fabulous. Thank you so much, Dr. Spencer. And remember, audience members, to submit questions if you have any for our panelists. But we'll now turn it over to Naoti Nunez, who will talk a little bit about what's going on at USF. So, Ms. Nunez, the floor is yours. Hi, Kristen. Can you can y'all see me and hear me? Yep, sound good. Awesome. Um, so thank you for having me today. As Kristen mentioned, my name is Naomi Nunez. I recently um, joined the Office of Multicultural Affairs, but previously I was overseeing the Living Learning Community Program here at USF. Um, the USF program here at the Tampa campus began over 12 years ago. Our first Living Learning Community was the Bulls Business Community in partnership with the MoMA College of Business. And then we had the first um, Honors College LLC for USF Tampa. And from there we've grown. Um, you can move on to the next slide, Kirsten, thank you. We've been able to have um, anywhere up to 14 LLCs depending on the year and the need with regards to the university's retention goals at the university. Um, but more often than not in the six years I've been here we've averaged about 10 living learning communities a year which are the number that we have right now. Our living learning communities are structured in a way where eight of them are academically focused LLCs, meaning that they're directly correlated to a student's academic major and also students' potential um, and desired career goals and career outcomes. So those vary from our Bulls in Health living learning community, which is with the College of Public Health. We also have a College of Nursing, College of Engineering, we have a women advancing and rising in engineering, which is very focused on supporting female engineering students, um, along with our business LLC honors and the Zimmerman Advertising Program Living Learning Community. Um, we also have two LLCs that are focused on population specific needs. One of them being our Stonewall Suites Living Learning Community, which supports the needs of our LGBTQ plus students, and also the ROTC Living Learning Community, which is a partnership with our strong ROTC program at USF. Um, so that's a little bit about which ones we offer, and there's a little video in my presentation for you all to see. But our LLC students, um, are able to live all across campus at USF Tampa. We have 14 residence halls here and we have LLCs in almost about every single one of them. The goal is to provide students options regarding where they would like to live um, that best suits their roommate needs, um, but also options that also can um, allow students to afford the living learning community experience. Um, our LLC program has a fee-funded and non-fee-funded model, which is quite important in how we're structured and why we're able to provide the level of support that we do at USF. Um, a few of our living learning communities are part of an LLC fee that was approved by the Board of Governors a few years ago. And that fee really articulates what are the specific learning outcomes and what is the commitment that the academic college must provide for the student, depending at the fee level. So we have a level A fee of $125 per semester per student and a level B fee of $225 per semester per student. So out of the 10 LLCs, only five of them have a particular fee. Um, with regards to the structure and how that connects to the fee, we meet on a monthly basis. Um, and when I say we, I mean the residential education team and future leadership once they fill this role. Um, they meet on a, vice, on a monthly basis for an advisory board meeting. Um, that meeting structure is um, really fundamental in the success of our program. It's really a reflection of our commitment to collaboration with our academic partners. And the people at that meeting, it's the resident assistant of the community, the residence hall director or residence life coordinator, the academic partner, um, and then a member of the academic initiatives and living learning community team, which previously for me, that was my role as a program director. And I oversaw two coordinators that also provided support to our partners. 
In addition to that advisory board meeting, we have what's called Living Learning Community Council. And these are some best practices that I wanted to share for those of you thinking of enhancing your LLC or creating new ones or providing suggestions to your respective colleges. Um, the LLC Council brings every person across the university that's involved in the Living Learning Community once a month, and that's about 20 plus people. With regards to the structure, we have this best practice model um, that I'm highlighting on the screen. This was developed by Dr. Karen Inkless, which, um, which has done extensive research on the impact of living learning communities among residential education students um, nationally. So once she um, held her this big assessment back in 2011, I believe, which was in 2008, the National Study for Living Learning Programs, she was able to track um, retention and persistence for first year students in living learning communities based on the following factors that are highlighted on the screen. So one thing that Dr. Inkless really talks about is having a strong infrastructure to move the program forward. Um, in addition for student impact, but for the sustainability of the collaboration and the success of the program. So as you can see in the infrastructure, you, you must have an academic department um, and a an housing uh, staff or department where either there's shared collaboration towards funding or sole, or sole independent contributions for funding. Once you have that strong structure, you need to make sure that the LLC piece is strongly connected to a, a good sense of support around an academic environment. And what that means is students should be enrolled in common courses that are taken for credit. There should be active faculty advising students, um, an academically supportive climate, meaning that maybe there's an academic success lounge in the residence hall community or an access to a classroom in that space. And then a socially supportive climate meaning that there's an RA for the community that's also enhancing students' ability to transition to USF, in this case, to increase the sense of social connection to university and sense of belonging. Once you build upon that, you're able to create a co-curricular environment, which is rooted in these specific high impact practices, which are listed, but one for us that we're a fan of um, are experiential learning opportunities, um, such as field trips, that we do with students depending on their particular major. Um, so we've been known, for example, the engineering LLC has gone to take a tour of one of the most popular rides in Bush Gardens and they get to meet with an engineer at Bush Gardens, get a behind the scenes tour and really kind of begin to see theory to practice and hands on, what would it be to be an engineering um, person in this society? What do I contribute? What are my career options? And it's really about forming and um, really affirming the student's career identity by linking the experiences to their academic learning and passions. Um, and last but not least, when you have this intentional integration of all of the components in this um, pyramid, it's what Dr. Inkless calls the icing. And that's when you begin to see your needle moving towards some of those um, retention and persistence goals. Kristen, you can move ahead and see if the video um, is able to be seen and heard, and I'll take it from there. Let you click. Okay, let's try. Thank you. Oh, okay. Hmm. Might need to open it. Stand by. No worries. Thank you. It might click through there. Okay, bringing it over. I think we've got it. Awesome. Thank you so much. It'll just highlight a little bit of what we do and reflect. Thank you. Become tomorrow's business leader. Explore a myriad of career opportunities in education. Get in hall academic support so you can excel. The place to live for high achieving students. Achieve success through peer support. Maintain your competitive edge. Explore a broad range of career opportunities. Connect with other STEM majors. 
Immerse yourself. Feel him at the time. Use ASL and daily Bible. Prepare for a commission in the U.S. Armed Forces. Welcoming all LGBTQ plus and allied students. Sharing the residential experience with other SSS students. Apply in the housing portal on our website and prepare to live the homeless life. Thank you. So that highlighted our programs. Um, I will talk a little bit about how students um, are able to join a living learning community. And then I'll talk a little bit about the data highlights that I wanted to share given um, our results. So for a student to be in a living learning community at USF Tampa in particular, we are a one campus system and we're still in the transition of moving some of our processes over to our St. Pete campus. They do have a few LLCs with a slightly different structure. So for us at USF, um, we also, like my colleague mentioned, the student must be admitted to USF. Once they are admitted to the university, they have access to submit a housing application and they must submit a housing application and their application fee before having access to submitting a supplementary application, which highlights their actual interest in a living learning community. Our students are able to apply to multiple living learning communities. Um, we encourage them to really be discerning about which one best fits, not just their social environment, but personal goals, career goals, and future goals regarding some of their academic success um, strategies that they hope to achieve. And once they apply, we have a system on the internally to determine how many they applied for. And if there's a little bit of a confusion for the student, um, our LLC partners, which are comprised of our academic advisors across the different colleges at the university, um, follow up with the student to ensure that they are able to be selected into the LLC that best suits them and their needs. Um, we tend to recruit for the LLC program at USF as early as November 15th when the housing um, application opens um, and this is cyclical. And then we do some active recruitment um, with our high school partners and then national recruitment through admissions um, between January and all the way up to June. Our priority date every year is June um, 1st with a hard deadline of June 15th to admit all living learning community students. Um, embedded in the LLC application, there's a set of commitment statements um, and those statements commit the student to some of the engagement practices and the high impact events that we provide for students. So because we have such a good structure from the beginning, I believe when students come in, they're pretty much ready to go. And our training program, which happens every summer, really brings our academic partners in alignment with the goals of residential curriculum in residential education and also in highlighting their own college goals. So because of that, we've had some great successes with our LLC program. This data is from 2019-2020, pre-COVID. There were some things we just couldn't do during the pandemic, given the structure of our program. But I just wanted to highlight, um, we had we achieved 100% um, LLC student retention among five of our living learning communities. That means every student that was a first time in college student at USF in 2019 returned to fall 2020. We had huge numbers in um, LLC students applying to be a resident assistant, which is directly linked to their leadership development at the university. Um, Della, who's speaking today, is one of those um, students that reflect this, this data point. And then you can see some of the other aspects of our program. Um, we have 97 majors represented across the program that year. Um, and are a lot of active engagement around career readiness, in-hall academic advising and tutoring, and service um, to the community. So those are some of our highlights, um, and I'm excited for the Q&A, or if anyone wants to get more information, we can share some contact info at the end. But again, thank you so much. Awesome. Well, I'll ask our all of our panelists to share their screen. That was such great information about LLCs at two different universities. And I'm so happy to bring our two students in as well. So we have four panelists here today, and hopefully we can have a panel style conversation. 
But I want to start off by asking our students a question. How did you hear about the LLC to apply to it? And tell me a little bit about your experience. Della, let's start with you. Hi, everyone. I hope y'all are having a good day. Um, just a little background about myself. I grew up in Okeechobee County, Florida, which is very small, very rural. So a lot of the initiatives within my high school were to just get us into the door when it came to college. For me, I'm kind of the student that likes to take that firsthand approach in creating my own experience. So finding out about the LLC required me Googling a lot. Um, when I applied to USF, got it, and started applying for my housing portal, I saw information about if you'd like to join an LLC, please fill out an application. And from then on, I researched like day and night to truly understand what the experience would be like within an LLC. And I am beyond happy that I chose to apply and got accepted in. So I started off in the inaugural um, cohort for the Rising Health Professionals LLC. I was in there for a whole year and I loved my experience like thoroughly, I'm not lying. Um, I was able to find community. I was able to be affirmed in um, the career path that I wanted to choose. And I was also able to develop so many skills that were important to my um, overall academic success and then also my career development as I went on throughout college. So. Um, my experience was just having faculty members come in and talk to us as rising health professionals. They came in and that helped me learn how to talk to faculty, how to interact with them, what it meant to give an elevator speech, and simple skills like that really just made me feel like, wow, this is something I can do and this is something that I can carry with me throughout my college career. My experience in the LLC is what prompted me to serve as a resident assistant with the student support services. I wanted to continue to just um, further the mission of what was being done in residential education. Through that, I was also able to learn, again, um, just important skills as far as um, planning events, planning, engagement, forming community, affirming other people and their identities, and truly ensuring student success at USF. So lovely. Great answer. I love to hear it. Thank you. Um, Jasmine, we'll switch it to you. How did you hear or how did you know to apply to an LLC and tell us about your experience? Um, greetings, everyone. Again, let me reintroduce myself. I am Jasmine Welch, a third year biology pre-medicine student hailing from Gainesville, Florida. Um, firstly, when I applied for my housing application, like we said that at the end of your ap housing application, it's on there saying the LLC. Personally, I did not know what that was. Um, like my peers said that I had to Google, I had to research. Um, around that time, I had just finished orientation as well. So I had already got a chance to meet some of my colleagues and some of my peers that would be in the same uh, major thing, study of field as me. So we discussed this together. We came in saying, hmm, maybe we should all try this together just to see, because even if it doesn't work, at least we're still in it together, right? So um, after we all applied, also, I got accepted as well. So after we all applied, got accepted, uh, things that were coming out, then we were excited, you know, living in the same dorm as each other, uh, being able to go to the same study sessions, going to the same classes and everything. We felt like there was already a connection established before we even stepped foot on campus, which is very important as a first year because first years tend to get lost going from high school to college. So it kind of puts have you a firm, flat foundation starting college? So, um, and like I said, also being home away from home is hard to have your support system away from you. So the LLC brought a support system for me. Like I said, living with 50 other people on the same hall, doing the same things as me. When I wanted to give up, they were there to push me. When I wanted to just not go to class, it was like, no, you're going to class. <laughs> when I didn't want to study, you're going to study, you're going to pass this test. We all held each other accountable and look where I am today. <laughs> that is a perfect answer. And that leads me right into my next question. And I want to know what the students say first, but then I'll open it to anyone who can answer. So nearly one third of first year college students don't return the next year. 
Yet research shows LLCs have been shown to increase student retention, right, onto the next year, as well as increase satisfaction with college. Why do you think that is? I know you started answering it, but tell me a little bit more about why you think that is. Well, let's start with you, Della. So college is very overwhelming. Um, from the moment you step foot onto a campus, you're often bombarded with so many different things. And it's honestly very hard to navigate, especially depending on where you came from. And I think what the LLC did was bring those overwhelming resources to us in a way where we were able to navigate it in an intentional way, if that makes sense. So I know for me, a lot of the resources as far as like, I wanted to become a doctor. So it was like shadowing, booking um, my classes for the semester, all of that was overwhelming. And um, if I would have done that all alone, I would have probably given it up, didn't know who to contact, or even um, just decided that this is too much. I want to do something else, you know, but within the LLC, we had designated times where an advisor would come over and we would talk about our class schedule. We had times where um, we would sit through, even as a group, even if it wasn't in a classroom setting, as a community, we would talk with one another. Hey, I just shadowed with this doctor. Would you like to connect with them? And for me, that shaped my whole experience. Um, college, College is a once in a lifetime opportunity. And um, my peers spoke on the aspect of, of accountability and um, being a kid in a candy store, you wanna try everything, you wanna look at everything. And even that element of accountability among my peers is what kept me going and is why I'm here today, so. Great answer. So that peer community, and I liked what you said about the resources really brought to you. So those resources are available to everyone campus, but in the LLC, they are really intentionally provided for you. Your peers are using them. So awesome answer. Jasmine, anything to add? Um, just to add that, um, I agree with everything my peers said, but just to add that when you join an LLC, obviously we, have, we each have an end goal in mind, but behind that goal, we all have a reason as to why we're doing what we're doing. When you surround yourself with people of like-mindedness and the same drive as you, it makes you want to do better. It makes you want to do more. And it makes you not want to give up, even especially when it's hard. Because going back to the accountability and the resources coming to us, there's no way we can quit because we're all right there together, holding each other up, pushing each other up, holding each other accountable. Excellent. Anyone else from the panel want to add anything on why they think LLCs really increase retention? I, I think as, as the, the students have um, stated so well, uh, is that community aspect um, of an LLC program. Um, I know many students have indicated that they have built, um, you know, long-term friendships uh, just from being in that initial uh, LLC cohort. So that's very, very important. And um, also it has led them to do other things on campus, like these, these young ladies. Um, you know, being resident uh, assistants and, um, and peer mentors. Uh, so they go on to do, uh, um, I think, participate in a lot of other efforts on campus. But I think that the community aspect is, is very, very important with all of the students working together and um, holding each other accountable. Very important. Go ahead, Naori. Yeah, I, I believe that with the peer accountability that was highlighted, there's a huge sense for students to be invested and committed together into a shared goal. And I think that's the beauty of living learning communities. Um, I think many students come to college and they make friends um, and they motivate each other. And that's what we want on a college campus. I've seen that in the living learning community program because there's that shared ambition. I want to be a doctor. I want to be an engineer or for our focus populations. I'm still exploring my gender identity, my sexual orientation. And I'm not doing this by myself. We are peer um, holding ourselves accountable to go into class. Um, and what we see in the retention piece is also higher GPAs among LLC participants and non-LLC participants. And I believe, and I believe just Jasmine talked about this, is when they don't feel like going to class, their peers are like, you are coming to class. Um, the second thing that I've heard students mention here is 
the accessibility to common course enrollment. They love how streamlined it is that they're going to the same classes with their floor mates, and then they get to study together or tackle a particular exam or paper with that support. Um, I think those are added, added pieces. And then when, when possible, we do try to offer peer mentors and um, in-hall academic advising. And what happens is you're removing structural barriers when you think about getting an advising appointment at universities of our size, right? Our academic advisors are sometimes managing a, a load of 600 to 800 freshmen. In the LC, you have this really small cohort 35, 50 students who are getting this more dedicated one-on-one -on -one support between advisor and student that other students don't experience. Right, and, and I think with just one other thing in terms of um, uh, early exposure to the career field, early exposure to uh, faculty and staff within that particular school or college in, in, in our case um, uh, is very, very important. Um, and they're building these relationships from, from the very beginning, um, where some students may not always have that early exposure, the LLCs have that. And I think being intentional, that's a very important word or concept for the LLC program, because we do bring programming into the residence hall. And um, so there, there is a lot of intentional programming as it relates to the LLC. So I want to come back to that um, in a moment, the, the early career exposure, because I think that's so important. But first, I, I see that there are quite a few K-12 folks on the call. So how can these folks connect with the LLC programs at the university so they can bring awareness to their students before they even set foot on the campus, right? How can they spread the message? Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, at Florida a and um, we have uh, what were to called, um, we just had a fall preview and actually quite a few uh, guidance counselors um, attended that along with students and high school students and parents. And we will have another spring preview um, uh, session in, in, in the spring. So um, that's one way in terms of the, the various events where we can um, provide additional information about the, um, our LLC program. Um, also, uh, in terms of our various recruitment efforts, efforts throughout the state, um, I know FAMU is very involved in, in terms of going out to the various high schools uh, throughout the state of Florida. So, um, and oftentimes uh, faculty and staff will participate in these efforts as well, and they will share information about the LLC program. Of course, um, our website, uh, we have information about the LLC um, so we utilize different uh, methods in terms of, of uh, promoting the program and creating that more awareness. And, and our, our students, I want to say our students um, <laughs> are very important in terms of um, uh, sharing their experiences as Jasmine has, has done uh, today. Um, and and that, that makes a big difference as well, uh, because students like hearing from their peers and knowing that, you know, they have uh, done well at the university, they've been a part of the LLC, uh, and it's very, been very important to their experience uh, at the university, um, uh, that goes a long way. Yes, Naoti, jump in. Yeah, I wanted to um, encourage the, the folks in K-12, particularly those middle school and high schooler um, attendees, to consider or assess what are the priorities of your particular school? Is there a particular um, specific, um, how can I say it, like a particular curriculum that the school is supporting or focusing on? So if you are representing a, a strong STEM middle school focus, STEM high school focus, look in your area for living learning communities um, at your universities, local universities, or even learning communities who are supporting STEM students. Um, and you can easily create, um, it may not be easy to begin with, but you'll notice that LC students are often willing to give back to their community. And I can see how you could develop like a STEM, and I'm just using STEM as an example because it's, it's been a huge focus at USF, but like a STEM mentoring program between STEM LLC students and your high school, right? Even if it's just like a robotics competition for fifth or sixth graders, um, you will see that maybe an engineering LLC student cohort can go and support them in that. 
for us, particularly here at USF, we have a very strong partnership with Brooks de Bartolo High School here in Tampa. Um, we were able to confirm a mentoring program for um, our student support services LLC and other students of color that participate in the Living Learning Program to mentor and coach particularly sophomore and juniors at the high school on what to expect from your college experience. What is a faculty member? Is that the same thing as a teacher? Um, how to apply to college? And then what are the benefits of the living learning community? So bringing um, high school students to the college, um, asking your college peers in your area, in your geographical area, um, if there's some events that are open to the community where students can have that early exposure to other LLC students. Um, and then the energy just becomes contagious and you be begin to plant the seed of interest. So when they apply to college, they already have some kind of focus or a little bit of a path to follow given what they're learning through these experiences and relationships. Those will be my suggestions. I love, I love that. Lots of great things going on, it sounds like. Awesome. And so we have a lot of questions coming through the chat. So we're going to try to hit some of them. So um, we're wondering, and we, we talked a little bit about the research. Students, tell us a little more about how faculty interact with you and your LLC and why is that such a big deal? I can go first. Um, so in my LLC experience as a member, um, faculty would come in and speak to us um, on their career path, how they got to where they are, they are and just um, give us tips and motivational cues um, to keep moving forward. And for me, that really meant a lot because a lot of the faculty and staff that did come um, into our LLC, um, some of them looked like me, you know? Um, it was nice seeing like a woman up there and that kind of for my identity. So um, in that, we're able to interact from like a student staff perspective or student faculty perspective. And um, that also opens up the avenue for like mentorship. So we have a professor, Dr. McComb, who is in another LLC. However, um, because of the network that we have with our LLCs, I was able to gain one-on-one -on -one mentorship with him, which meant like going out, eating, scheduling a meeting with him, kind of telling him what I'm going through, telling him my career path and him giving me advice or even um, providing certain networks that he had that could help me out with whatever situation I was in. And um, one of the big things that was done was like, he gave me a letter of recommendation when I was applying to grad school. So I think one of the hardest things as a student is to talk to your professors, talk to faculty and staff and being in an LLC provided such an easy transition to just even go and knock on their door. Sometimes you felt comfortable and you felt like, okay, yes, they are at the specific status. However, at the end of the day, they're here to help us out too, so. Mm, great answer. Jasmine, do you have anything you'd like to add? Yes, just continuing on what she said. Um, many times, especially with professors, there's so many students, over 100 students that they have. And being the LLC, it gives you a more direct relationship with them. And it gives a way for them to not just know you as student, but as, for example, Jasmine, your first and last name, they know you. So it gives a chance for you to go to the office anytime, just like my pre-med advisor. I can walk in his office anytime. Uh, my CSC cohort, I can walk into her office anytime. You know, it's just, it gives you a more direct relationship for them to mentor you on more personal levels than you would as a student that's outside of the LLC, just because there's so many students, but with the connections and things that you have with the peer mentors and the people that's over the LLC, they have connections so that you're connected to them, they care more about you. <laughs> really, really cool and special experience. And I'll open this up to anyone. What type of students would benefit from living in an LLC? Wow, that's that's a great question. I, I think um, I think students who um, again want to be um, around, you know, as we've indicated today, more like-minded, you know, goal-oriented uh, students. Um, again, that that's a benefit of the LLC. But I I think also um, even if a student may be a little shy, again, they 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 haven't 
basically an automatic uh, family, a built-in family, if you will, um, of students that um, they they can get to know, you know, right away, and where where they have something in common uh, from the very beginning. So again, I think um, uh, it does help students in terms of um, helping them to or assisting them in having a hopefully a better transition um, to, from high school to the university environment. And we've, we've seen that work with the LLC program. I love that. Yeah, anyone else wanna jump in or add anything? Um, I think a student that benefits or should be attracted to an LLC is a student who's ready to take their college experience to another level. Mm -hmm. um, students that are able to see the connection between academics and future career goals um, and want a transition that is seamless and efficient in getting from point A to point B. Um, one thing that I would also highlight is when we think about not just students, we have to think about their families. Um, what type of family is attracted to supporting their student wanting to be in a living learning community? As we both heard from Della and Jasmine, they didn't know what that was, they had to Google it. And oftentimes, and um, Dr. Spencer talked about this when we have preview days also, a bulk of my time with families are not convincing them to join an LLC, but explaining what it is. Um, because we are using very rooted like academic lingo um, that gets lost in translation with how to navigate college. So I've seen the, the most success um, and the higher, I guess, tipping points of data with first-gen students, but in particular, first-gen students of color, where we've engaged their families from the very beginning with an understanding of, do they know American college university systems? That has happened a lot with our international students that participate in living learning communities, um, especially from Latin American backgrounds. Sometimes culturally, the parents see LLCs as a distraction because we talk about this program and this event. They're like, no, I just want them to go to class. And we have to talk about that. So it's really about the type of student and family member that can understand that this is the difference between an A and an A plus, right, in a college experience. And that's typically what I tell them. Fascinating answer. I, I love that so much packed into that. And I'm so sad to say we're almost out of time. So our last question, I'll just ask everyone, your 30 second what do you want, especially if there are folks on this webinar who work in K-12 organizations, what would you want them to know that we haven't said yet about LLCs? And I'll start with you, Della. Um, I think honestly that LLCs, kind of what um, Lodi said, takes you from an A to an A plus. And for me, it was like one of the reasons why I decided to stay at USF to do my master's. So honestly, providing these resources to your students, allowing them to truly understand that college is not just a one size fit all experience that you can, you can have autonomy in your college experience. I think it's a good way to approach LLCs um, when talking to your students and for me, I'm an advocate for LLCs, like a diehard LLC fan, became an RA in it just because of the community that was fostered for me, the networking that was built through it, and just the sense of purpose and the sense of um, being affirmed in what I wanted to do. So, yeah. Perfect. Jasmine, what's your 30 second takeaway? Yes, so I believe that um, recognizing students that have an inkling of just something that they want to do. You just have to recognize the drive and passion that they have inside themselves and direct them on the right path, um, especially when you surround themselves with maybe other students that have a uh, passion and drive as well. It does nothing but increase their stats and everything. So like the A to A plus, even sometimes it can be a C to an A plus, you know, you never know the effect that you have on students. So just make sure that in the LLC, just make sure that it's not just a name, that you have to live it. You have to put more into it so that you can give back into the community outside of the LLC. Ooh, that was good. That was good. LLCs are a game changer. I love the way that you described that. Dr. Spencer, what do you say? Well, I, I think with the LLC program, again, we, we've truly seen the, the benefits of the program. And I think for um, uh, students who are interested and in really give, give the program a, a chance, um, they're really able to make um, 
great connections on, on campus. And again, at an, at an early stage uh, in their career. Um, but again, it does, uh, it, they have a positive experience. And again, that community within the larger FAMU community, if you will, um, they have that experience. And again, it does benefit them in terms of their you know, first year GPA, retention, graduation, all of those things that are very important in terms of uh, academics, but socially as well, helping them to make those, um, again, those early connections, the network, networking, and um, again, um, helping them to get an early start on their career path. So um, it, it's a great program and we have seen the um, wonderful results um, since implementing the program here at Florida in it. Awesome, and Naoti, take us out. Yeah, I would say just within the context of Florida for my K through 12 folks, um, colleges are very eager to get as many students to participate in living learning communities as possible because the retention and persistence numbers that yield from that have direct impacts on funding in the state of Florida, right? So it's really critical that you um, do not shy away from reaching out to the colleges, um, to the LC directors at different colleges and ask, when are you recruiting? What is your recruiting strategy? Um, could someone come to my high school? Is there a coordinator? Because they're dying to get students through the door because there's a direct benefit and correlation between student participation and how much money the, the college gets. So see this as a cyclical collaboration. And when you look at a student from beginning to end, um, we focus a lot on the first year experience, but what we're doing is really forming amazing alumni that then go back and give to your own communities, both regionally and reflect and represent your high school, your college at a national level. So don't shy away from bridging that collaboration gap because we need you to get the students here. Amazing. Wow. Such great answers. I hope we have lots of new LLC ambassadors on this call. I know we've taken all of our time, so I just want to thank our amazing panelists and everyone for attending today um, and enjoy your afternoon. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks.